the company. Uh, they're going to look at your accounts receivable, which they always have, but they're now looking more closely. Uh, they're not only, you know, rate retained receivables used to get a free pass. There's a retainage, okay, you'll collect it. We know it takes a year or whatever to collect it. They're no longer giving you a free pass on that. They're looking at everything in much more detail. It's a much more granular analysis. So they're looking at retained receivables and saying, how long has it been out there? Uh, they're going into all of those sort of questions, and, and you can anticipate if you didn't hear them last year, that you will this year in terms of more and more depth in those sort of things. Underbillings, again, scrutinizing underbillings more closely. Is it is it an unapproved change order that's not ever going to really turn into a receivable? Uh, if they're nervous about it, guess what? It's going to get deferred or it's going to get written off. All of the things that will negatively impact your working capital, negatively impact your, uh, your aggregate uh, program. Inventory, prepaid expenses, other examples of what they look at for adjustments. Typically, depending on the nature of the inventory, you're going to see some sort of discount on that. Prepaid expenses, um, certain sureties treat them differently. Some with insurance and tax will give you credit, most of them won't. So these are all things that you want to look at and be aware of, be prepared to answer, to answer questions on when your surety sits down with you because these are the things that they're going through in their analysis. Balance sheet composition and focus on liquidity. Uh, again, more important than ever. Uh, I don't want to get into too much detail in terms of how they go through the analysis, but we'll be happy to talk to anybody about how they do this if you have any questions. Uh, but uh, what they are starting to look at is, we talk about these sort of things, balance sheet composition uh, is, is looking at you know, things like your earnings. Contractors are on percentage completion basis for financial statements. So there's some portion of your earnings that are driven by completed contracts where you know where, wh where the profits come from. There's obviously some portion, in some cases it's a large portion these days, less. So, but that comes from, uh, from your estimates on your, on your work in progress. They're looking at that more closely. They look at your balance and how much of your profit came from completed that you know is good, how much of your profit is coming from work in progress where it's still an estimate and it's unknown. And they're looking at doing profit trend analysis on, on your statements that they always have, but looking at it more closely and saying, hey, does this company book their margins at uh, 5% and they finish at 5? Do they book it at 5% and it finishes at 7? Do they book it at 5% and it finishes at 3? If you have a trend that it finishes below where you initially booked them, you're overstating your profit, you're overstating your balance sheet, and, and it's likely that the surety will take that into account when looking at your aggregate program, your multiples, and that sort of thing. So critical, critical stuff in terms of the analysis and, and, and important to understand. Uh, it, it, those sort of things, particularly profit trend analysis, go, also goes to the credibility of, of, of the numbers that you're providing for them. Uh, one of the last things, things on this is bank debt. Uh, bank debt, working capital line of credit debt is, is, is one of the primary focuses in our experience with the surety companies that we're dealing with. Um, if you're into your working capital line of credit, uh, it, it gets banks or it gets sureties nervous. They want you to have a big line and not use it. Uh, but, uh, but obviously in today's environment, a lot of people are using it. If you are forced to use your bank line for working capital, you can certainly expect at minimum to get more conservative uh, support from your surety company in terms of aggregate. Uh, it just is a fact of life. They're concerned that that's a demand facility and with what's going on in the banking world still, um, with as recently as, as with what happened with Wilmington Trust, which in fact impacted a lot of contractors, uh, that's, you know, those sort of uh, concerns about whether your bank your bank line will be renewed, well, how strong your bank is, that, that's what drives the concern if you're into your bank line uh, in, in an excessive way, is that you may end up losing that. It's got, that's a really good point. I think something to, to take off of that too is we're often tied to just the balance sheets that you're seeing at a point in time. Right. Anything that you can do with uh, people like Mario or Dave is to show how often you're in and out of the bank, so that it's not just that snapshot that you see that you're always in it. Um, there's very often times you have to clean up your out of it. So the trending, I think, is a good thing to demonstrate to them too that there's cash flow that gets you out of the bank, and underwriter only sees a statement that shows you're in it. Sure. Yeah. So it's a good thing to demonstrate that no, we actually have been out for 120 days or something like that. Uh, 
Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Your agent should certainly, and it should be asking because the underwriter will, if you're into your bank line, you're finding out, you know, what, as, as, as Tom points out, that's one day in time, it's a snapshot, you know, what's, what's been happening before that and what's happening out after that. If you've been into it, why were you into it? Was there a receivable that was done? Is it a seasonal issue that drives it? Uh, and talking about all those things and, and, and trying to demonstrate as little reliance as possible on that is certainly a good thing. It gives everybody a little bit more comfort. So those are some of the basic factors. Uh, beyond the balance sheet, this is uh, the, the balance sheet is really what is what everybody looks at in terms underwriters look at in terms of that aggregate support. But you know what are underwriters going to be looking at beyond that is what I'm trying to come here. They're going to look at and do their analysis and uh, and in the good times where everybody's making money and work is plentiful, uh, that's you know the 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 mentality is one that, that's positive, assuming that you're going to make money, assuming that there's going to be enough work out there for you to do what you need to do, cover overhead and all that kind of stuff. That's not, that, that assumption is not in play anymore. Um, the attitude, and, and justifiably so, is, uh, is, is really 180 degrees from there and, and assuming the worst, which is that you're not going to be able to get the work you, that you need at the margin that you need to cover overhead. And that really what you're, all you're going to get credit for at the end of that, that fiscal year end meeting is based upon the profits that you had in the work in progress that's booked and on your books. Beyond that, you know, everybody's question, you guys are all competing, you know, beyond that is, you know, am I going to be able to get the work? And uh, which is a whole other topic. Uh, but so, so your shooting <coughs> underwriter is certainly looking at that. They're taking the profit that you have in your backlog. They're looking at it and saying, okay, how much of this year's overhead is that going to cover in 2011? And then they're going to look at, you know, what what your GNA is projected to be. They're going to ask you questions about what your GNA is project, projected to be, and they're going to want to hear from you how you plan on being able to get to a break-even revenue level. So, all things that you want to be thinking about in terms of that discussion for sitting down with the shirt company. Financial projections, uh, if if you can provide them, are certainly appreciated by the underwriters. Uh, it, 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 it gives them a much better understanding, uh, show you what your GNA is, where it's going to be going. Having a plan in place, uh, uh, if, if there still is any room to cut GNA in your organization, which most there aren't, because everybody is cut to the bone, uh, <coughs> if there is, you know, having a plan. And, uh, you're probably through plan A, if you're like most contractors, and potentially through plan B in terms of cutting. So if there's a plan C and D, Certainly good to have that uh, ready and prepared for a discussion depending on where that backlog is. Here's some of the things I talked a little bit about um, that, that, that underwriters are going to this step, looking at, at your work in progress, calculating your GNA. And this kind of ends up with this last one, that ultimately the underwriter wants to understand that there's going to be sufficient liquidity in your balance so you can cash flow, you can cash flow you through the year and through the issue problems and that sort of thing. So, yeah, next slide. This gets into a little bit again about um, being able to uh, right size the company's balance sheet and everybody is certainly going through that exercise in their mind. Uh, subcontractor pre-qualification process, again, this is something that if, if you're a general contractor or if you're a trade contractor who uses subcontractors, this is something that surety underwriters are focusing more and more on, and again, rightfully so. You have risk to your balance sheet and profitability, obviously, based on what happens with your subs, based on the, uh, the, the perception that there is, and the reality now that there is more and more sub failures. Um, this question is getting at, what are you doing to pre-qualify the subcontractors that can impact you? Uh, and so it's not good enough anymore to say, well, I've known Joe for 15 years and been working with him, and he always does good quality, timely work. Uh, it close? Okay. It's no longer good enough to say that because what you don't probably know about Joe, unless you're doing some additional pre-qualification, 
is that uh, while he's always well, he's been around for a long time and, and he does good quality work, what you don't know is that he's got a big hunt receivable from another contractor that's stealing his cash flow, and he's taking the money that you're paying him and using it on in, in other places. And so this again is an issue that is something that's being focused on and that you want to be prepared to be able to address. Banking relationships, we talked a little bit about how important these are uh, from both, a, from both a, a real cash flow standpoint and also from a psychological standpoint for, uh, for trading companies. So. <laughs> what can I do to strengthen my surety relationship? I mean, they're all the basics. It's probably not anything that you haven't heard before, uh, but certainly good ones to hear at this time of year before you're sitting down uh, and things that you should really be practicing throughout the year. You know, communication, um, getting financial statements out as quickly as possible. You know, uh, it, it's kind of a joke in our industry, but there is a lot of truth to it that, you know, the, the, the ones that, that companies that are doing well, they want to get the financial statements out quickly and show the good results. The ones that come at the end of the process are usually ones where there's issues uh, and, and problems. And so uh, hopefully your agent is calling and talking to you about, you know, what your expectations are for the year and communicating that to, uh, to the underwriter. But uh, that's something, particularly if there's going to be bad news, there's going to be a loss. There needs to be some conversation and some uh, a notification to the surety ahead of time. You don't want to drop statements on their desk that show them to be ready. Uh, at the bottom of the page without the plan and all that kind of stuff. So uh, being prepared, proactive, uh, we talked about that. And, and certainly last item, which is plan for, for, uh, for more lead time in terms of any unusual or large projects that you're looking to get approved. And that's pretty much it. Uh, anybody have any questions that I can answer? Great, perfect. If you're on, let me know. Thanks. Thank you, David. The next speaker is Ben Huggett. Ben is a shareholder at Liver of Mendelssohn. His entire practice focuses on um, occupational health and safety, so I think he's well equipped to talk to you.